Hi and welcome to another video. Today we will look at some very very basic topic. And this channel is not supposed to be really about these basic, most basic Flutter topics. However, there is an issue that I'm seeing even some of the decent developers doing and I've also been talking with my friends and they also see the same issue happening in the code bases that they, they are looking at, they're working with. Um, so I think it is something that is worth talking about in the end. What I want to talk about is about calling things in the build method. What should be called in the Flutter build method? Here I prepared a simple application with a provider scope. We'll use Riverpod for a certain reason you will see in a moment. And then we just have this one widget over here with a build method to displace a text in the center. And on the right side you can see over here we have this text displayed. And the problem is that we will see frequently people doing something like this. Let's imagine we have some view model or something similar over here. Um, so this function would sit somewhere else than in the widget itself. But for simplicity, let's make here some function. Let's call it calc. And maybe let's return a double over here. Let's return something like this times this divided by that times this, whatever. It doesn't have to be a complex calculation. It can be any calculation, anything that takes uh, processing power. And then someone will go over here, will call uh, final x equals cal. This of course can have some parameters, whatever. And then that person will come over here and let's say that after some text we want to display the number. And of course we cannot be constant anymore. Here we go, let's save it. Of course our modern software can handle this, no problem. So we have the calculation instantly done and shown here after some text. Of course, this calculation could be also something more time consuming, which could also cause a junk, but that's not the topic over here. That's a topic for another video. And then let's say that maybe another more real life example than this would be that we would have some um, tracking strategy that we implement. Let's say that we will have a use case class class um, track event use case, let's say without that here we go and then we will have some method real world it will be a future of course but here we will have a void um, call and let's give it a name over here and then we will print it so we will just print the name of the tracking event that we want to track and then maybe just to not confuse ourselves um, later, let's not make this use case callable. Let's just call the method execute instead. Because otherwise the syntax would be maybe not very clear later. And again, in the real world, we would have some view model and the use case would be probably called the view model and not directly in the tree. Um, but for the simplicity of this example, let's do that. So let's say we have a provider. Uh, track event use case provider. And let's just do this, track event use case, let's provide this use case. Uh, let's start with a lower case. Here we go. So we have our variable. So now inside of this build method, we can call final mm, track event use case. And then let's just do ref watch and let's give it track event provider. There we go. And let's say we have this use case and the um, requirement, the domain requirement is that we, for example, lock when the application starts. And there are developers who will think that this is a perfect place to call this track event use case and execute on it. And let's say up started, something like this. And of course, we have to give it a name. There we go. So far, no problems. Everything will work. Um, we can see the logs over here on the right side. Let's clear them. Or let's now just hot restart the whole application. Here we go. That already happened. And we can see here, app started. All good. The event was tracked. And now, Flutter is smart, the framework is optimized. So if some things happen, like for example, if we now rotate the screen, uh, the device, there we go, then this is this build method is not called again. We can see that this app started did not get called again. But 
There are other problems with calling something in the build method. The problem is with doing something like this, like either executing this event over here or calling this calculation, that we do not control how the build method is being called. This build method is called by the framework and it's not guaranteed that will only be called once. So this may happen due to some um, configuration changes, like for example, if we would depend on a team and then the team is changing from light to dark, then this build method may get called in order to get the new values from the team. So this will be due to the inherited widget, but there are also other conditions. In our case, since we are using the river plot over here, we will look how it works if we are using some provider that may change. So let's say we will have another provider over here, some provider equals, and this will be a state provider this time. Let's say that it just returns free an integer. Here we go. So over here, let's do state equals ref watch. And now we have some provider. All right, so we will get the value. And now let's also print after x state. Here we go. You can see already what happens on the hot, relo hot reload. Every time the app gets hot reload, the build method is already called. Of course, the real application that goes to the user will not have a hot reload, so this is not a problem, but you can see already where the problem may be. So now let's also wrap this center with a ink well. Here we go. Now let's give it on top like this and also a comma, oops, a comma over here. Yeah, so we have on top. Now let's say ref read over here. So we will get our provider, some provider. And also we need to get the notifier now so we can access state. And let's say that when we tap on the on anywhere basically because we're wrapping anything everything right now, we will do state plus one. Okay, let's clear the locks right now. I've also hot restarted and now what what happens? So we start with three over here at the state. And every time I'm tapping on this, we are getting the event, the tracking event called again and again. This is because anytime that the value changed here of, of this provider, the sum provider that we have over here defined, then this build method will rebuild exactly like we would be using the inherited widget. Here you go. And that's the problem. That's why we cannot put something like this inside of a build method because it will get called many times possibly. Imagine if there would be an animation on this widget and there would be a ticker, then this would be then called every second. And here we are printing something, so we see there is a problem. But if you have a calculation, like for example over here, then there will be no print out and you don't know that this is something you should cache, you should run it somewhere else, probably in a view model or whatever else controller presenter you have there, and then pass it to the widget. Now let's go to the documentation of the build method and now this is the problem that people jump into writing Flutter, do it even for a very long time but never really read the documentation. And in this channel I just really want to encourage you to always go to documentation and to source code if available. So let's read. The framework called the build method when the widget is inserted into the tree in a given build context when the dependencies of the widget change. Here is the important part. This method can potentially be called in every frame and should not have any side effects beyond building a widget. It's super important and it's plain, in plain English written over here in the documentation. The only thing that we should do in the build method is we should return a widget. We should build this widget. Sometimes it needs more customization like if we have to calculate the height for some reason, then yes, we will have to do it over here. We should not have side effects. And calling, for example, this tracking event over here, the execute, this is a side effect. Doing this calculation over here, this is also a side effect. This kind of things should go into on init method. We would have to change here to consumer state of widget or to your presenter view model on init method, whatever you have there. To finish up and why I used river pot in this example, because it looks a little bit superfluous is that what a friend of mine pointed out that there are people coming to Flutter and then they see that, for example, you have this watch over here from Riverpot and other packages 
or also you have this listen which is even better example maybe because listen is to be used only in a build method let's give it some provider some two variables for new and old there we go and they are seeing something like this ref.listen ref.watch and they like okay so if you can call this kind of things inside of a build method why not to call something else and now again if we would read documentation let's for example go to this listen method over here let's see what it says so listen to a provider and call listener whenever its value changes without having to take care of removing the listener this is the first hint over here and we also get a small notification here that this should be only used in the build method and then when used inside build listeners will automatically be removed here it is if a widget rebuilds and stops listening to a provider so we can call a listen or a watch over here inside of a build method because riverpod is taking care of cleaning this up for us so there is a little bit different thing happening over here here we are executing some code that is doing something and it will do something that we don't want it to do in every rebuild of the build method but if we call this a listen over here or watch then what happens is riverpod is starting it's attaching a listener to know that it needs to rebuild this widget when something changes inside of what's listened or watched so we are working reactively but we don't actually execute any code except of just registering a listener and secondly what the documentation said when it's getting rebuilt then the old listener is just swapped with a new listener now i know this is this video is um for the beginners and i know that most of the people will probably love looking at this but still, looking at many of code bases in the past months and years, I think this is a topic that needs to be stressed more in the community, even though it's simple. And so also, as always in this channel, I want to encourage everyone to look into documentation of everything that you're using, even if you think you perfectly know what that thing does that you are using. If you like this content, please subscribe to this channel, leave a comment, maybe a like, and I call you to death and I see you the next time. Bye bye.